Uh, running without um, any uh, protection below the glass, running on a hard surface, uh, it can be some risk. Um, if you have some uh, stones or something on, on the surface, or some small gravel, um, you could get, uh, you could have the glass cracking. One of the well, in this case, with this aquarium, it's 5mm glass, sorry, it's 4mm glass. I uh, decided to take my chances and uh, run without uh, any foam below the aquarium. Um, I put it on a new piece of plastic to cover, um, to cover. And I, I wiped it thoroughly uh, with a dust wipe uh, to have everything removed. But I think I made a mistake. I forgot. I took a brand new aquarium out of the package and I forgot to wipe the bottom glass. Because I was stressed about having an, all of the livestock waiting to, to, to get into the aquarium. And what we see here is you see the fish and it's reflecting in uh, in the bottom so you get a reflection but then you see a little bit inside under the rock I'll point my fingers you see here that uh, there are two white spots I actually suspect that that is a refraction uh, I'm not gonna put it there I'm gonna put it there I think that's a ref refraction uh, due to some unevenness there is an air pocket I have been hoping that it was just like a drop of water or something like that and that it's gonna dry up but it hasn't dried up and you can see now that I lift the rock Bad news. It remains. I was hoping it could also be a reflection beneath the rock, but it's not. I can see. I can tell it's not. Um, what's good is it hasn't cracked the glass just yet. Yeah, just make sure. You see. Uh, let's move it back a little bit. Two white spots there. One there and one there. What's good is it hasn't cracked uh, the glass just yet, um, and uh, it might not do either, but um, to me it's not uh, comfortable, uh, so I will do something about it. Before that, okay, yeah, I flipped it. Before that, I'd just like to say one <laughs> One, one of the reasons why I uh, don't like uh, advanced uh, aquascaping, like when you put rocks on each other, one of the main reasons why I don't like it is that when you, when you go in and do something, it's uh, virtually impossible to get it back the way it was, and you were happy with the way it was, and you're not able to restore it. Um, Come on, be with me. That's why I don't like it. Okay, so what do you do about this? Bad news, and what do you do about it? In this case, what's good is I only keep 50. 44 liters of water in this tank meaning so my plan is actually next time I do the water change I'm gonna I'm gonna drain almost all the aquarium I'm gonna keep maximum uh, uh, what I need for the for the fish uh, to avoid uh, taking the fish and the rock out of the water I'm gonna uh, keep the uh, the top rocks um, 
dry for for this one but i'm gonna keep uh for maybe four centimeters of water three or four centimeters so the fish uh, can stay it's small fish and then um, i'm gonna just tilt up the uh, tank and have a look try to wipe it i think it is by the looks of it i am suspecting it is a uh, small uh, uh two grains of uh, gravel actually and it looks like the glass is pushing the plastic um looks like the glass is pushing the plastic creating an air pocket cavity and uh, that is what's changing the uh, reflection uh, or refraction it's actually the reflection so that's what's changing it bad news sucks i was stressed so but you do it one more time and you do it right Tonight's gonna be a busy night. I have a rule of thumb and I'm not gonna follow it. My rule of thumb is only do one thing at a time. And tonight I think I'm gonna do at least three. So let's see how successful that is. Um, actually the priority tonight, uh, doing, doing three things, it's good to set the priority. Priority is to actually see what is under the glass. If it's a uh, gravel or a small stone which is lifting and changing the refraction um, or if it's just something else that's the first thing and most important one i'm going to do that changing the water at the same time today so i already have the water in the mix uh, that's the second thing i'm going to do change the water today um, then i want to take the um, take the opportunity of having good salt water to actually also remove the rocks to the left with the Ricodeas, no sorry not the Ricodea, the um, Rhodactis, the green Rhodactis rock, I'm going to remove it and uh, start removing the Rhodactis uh, and selling them off because I don't want to keep Rhodactis in this uh, system. So change the water, get the Rhodactis prepared to uh, take it out of the tank so I actually have a second tank sitting ready to take these rocks and I'm going to use the 12 liters for the water change to that. And on top of that, fourth thing is that I had to go and buy a heater for the second tank because I uh, had lack of heaters. I need to get them back to the hobby. So on top of that, actually going to the reef shop, I took a new Coralin. So I'll be introducing that into the system. So actually that's four things in the same night. That's going to be a very, very busy night. I will probably have more time tomorrow to give an update, but I've started a skimmer. I actually good results. And you see the micro bubbles? No, there is no micro bubbles. And then also change the light to an AE Prime. Yeah, I can just tell you that I'm not, um, it doesn't feel too good to do four things at the same time but that's how it turns out so let's keep our fingers and uh, hope for the best first thing is to prepare the coral i think to get it out of the way so i actually just put put the coral in a, a plastic bucket and uh, i'm gonna try to keep temperature of this bucket in parallel. Okay, I think it's uh, time to start siphon out some water and um, I will just close everything off and see how that goes on the uh, video. Seem to be working. I take the opportunity now that everything is shut off also to clean clean the skimmer cup. I haven't been producing too much uh, uh, gooey stuff. It's actually been running quite. The skimmer has been running quite wet, and I think with three fishes and such a there's a big or oversized skimmer, it's. Um, um, 
such a big and oversized skimmer. Uh, three fishes is not a lot. Uh, so I kept it wet and it's been running wet. Um, now that I siphon, I will start with the 12 liters that's going into the other tank. And um, when I do that, I will actually try to take some of the detritus or debris on the bottom. Uh, so I also get rid of that. <laughs> well, that, that was easier said than done, actually. Um, I um, <laughs> I, I marked my buckets with uh, two buckets, six liters, that equals 12. So siphoning out, trying to siphon out the, uh, the debris of the bottom at the same time as I'm trying to shoot straight into the bucket and keep track of uh, uh, the level that I'm getting out um, six, uh, six liters. That was quite difficult. Uh, that was multitasking and that's not really good. So let's hope we don't get a catastrophe tonight. I am a skimmer, yeah, I clean the skimmer cup as well. And let's see here, let's not forget about... Uh, let's not forget about our new little friend to, uh, to the aquarium. We need to two of those. So next step now. Next step now is actually keep siphoning, keep siphoning to really reduce the um, water level as much as possible. When we are at, uh, I think maybe four centimeters remaining, I think actually to be nice to the uh, um, to be nice to the philia uh, and also to the candy cane, the calustria. I will actually, I will actually have them sitting in a bucket instead, um, so that they don't sit without water too long. And let's see if I can uh, move, uh, shoot that. But when when I move uh, Euphilia, usually what I do is before taking them out of the water, I put them upside down, and then uh, wave them gently. Try to bug them a little bit to retract the tentacles because I think if you lift it up and it's like a fully fully blown uh, euphilia full with water actually you can damage the polyps so I try to get them to uh, to retract uh, let's see if I get that on film okay let's pause here so this rock has one Picodea on it. It's actually not a rock, I think it's yeah, it's some sort of dead coral. It's a dead coral. Not sure what what it is. Um, and this is this is the rock which gives the most. And both finger, both hands actually. Both hands is a bit difficult if you drop it, so it's not very good on your glass. Um, and I have oh, one of these rocks with the. Uh, uh, this is with the swan pits. Let's take that out for now. Sorry. Um, let's see if we can get the, the trick with the Euphemia. It's already now retracted quite a bit, so okay, not sure if you will see, but what I do is I hold it now upside down, so you will be able to see, and then I just wave it gently back and forth. I mean, there, if you see a dead euphilia, sometimes the polyp is um, it has quite a lot of hard, harsh, um, or sharp edges, the polyps. So you can imagine, I mean, uh, these tentacles, uh, I mean, if they're filled with water, 
really uh, blooming and, and the uh, shape of the sharp edge uh, they can really get the tissue damage so that's good enough or close enough to not come out hit the bucket so it's not really pissed and then be kind, kind let's be kind to the can can for this we don't have to do much about any sanity check yeah I'm gonna keep one of the box with the rhodactis I'll keep one of the box with the rhodactis uh, for now and focus on the big family actually my clownfish they're starting to claim the Ethelia, so rub against it to get used to uh, the um, toxins. Uh, so, uh, but I'll keep the Rodactis for now until they're fully. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna go as low as I dare and then I'm gonna try to tilt the aquarium up. Um, I had to uh, actually had to go all the way. I uh, now I checked. From what I can see, is actually what it looks like, or what I can tell. It looks like either there is uh, some manufacturing deficiency in the plastic, uh, or beneath the plastic, between the plastic and the wood, there is uh, one drop of water which cannot escape. Um, so, I dusted the underside. I did find some silicone residues from the production. And, and I dusted and dusted and blowing as well. Please help me now. Do not. It's strange. So please help me. Yeah, and by the way, by the way, <laughs> with small children, my children likes books. So that was actually the best stacking to get under with, you know, my hand to wipe. Uh, before leaving this. I also like to add that yeah, what, what happened was fish fish went out of the system uh, doing this maneuver. I kept two corals, probably a little bit cranky because uh, um, they uh, um, probably a little bit cranky, but I think it's going to be fine. And. Uh, because I had to remove so much water, I wanted to stay safe. Let's see, and this one. Okay, now it's gonna be fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up. And before I fill up, I'm gonna go out to the reserve aquarium where I'm going to store the Rhodactis and I'm going to put on the heater. I had the heater soaked. I soaked the heater in um, in that aquarium because uh, yeah. before you turn them on you should try to soak them so they get the same temperature as the water. Uh, and then you turn them on and then you avoid cracking. And let's not forget about our New friend here. Let's give it so our new water. Be curious to see how many degrees I'm losing here, but we uh, currently keep the house on 22, so hopefully not too much. Let's see water back. Now uh, you know. Now you're stressed and you want to go fast and all. I think one of the basic problems with this type of aquarium on the, on this height is you start messing about so let's try to avoid that 
We are um, right. small way on the way there. It's at least as high as. Uh, Least as high as uh, that I can put in the more sensitive customers. Actually, the Philly had a started to to go go back out a little bit. not forget our new friend get the dirty water as well because it's going to come to you soon hmm. for fifth fifth the fifth thing I was supposed to multitask was actually that the fifth thing to multitask was actually that on the ACAN that I had there was actually some uh, Valonia bubble algae. I'm gonna try to remove that while I have it here. Let's see. There are some things I like about aquarium this size and also when you do the reefscape. I mean, box on the bottom because it means that you can take it apart like I've done here tonight. Uh, you can take it apart and, uh, um, and get it back fairly the same way it looked before. Um, but then I can also tell you that uh, I, <laughs> doing it, I really don't enjoy it. Another thing with this type of reefscape or uh, very it's sparse that I also like is that I if I introduce a coral or I introduce a rock uh, I mean I can monitor it quite easily to see if there's any notions or stuff that I don't like um, so I've been picking starfishes <coughs> uh, off the rock and the window so they're pretty clear of Coralline algae starfishes, and uh, I can monitor it, quite, monitor it quite well. And now I have a coral here which I bought, and it had Valonia or bubble algae, and I monitor it and take them off to try to reduce getting that into the system or getting a population of that into the system. Okay. We're filling up tiny pieces since I have the Euphilia here. I will go carefully. Soon I'll get uh, like a maxi jet pump or something similar to. Um, automatic air filling. Problem here is with the furniture where I keep the tank. It's really easy doing a mess. Making a real mess. I mean dumping water. Um I think we said it was a multitasking five things. First one, first one being to check out uh, the reflection under the aquarium. That one is done. Um, second one was to do a water change. Ah, oh, that was a bit. I didn't want to uh, disturb the infilia more.
yeah, do the water change. Then I'm gonna take the water to also take out the rocks with the Ricodea and then take care of that one. Um, it's looking promising. Okay, actually this is just switching up, switching on the light, um, switching on the pumps, and I see that the corals are kind of cranky. And you see here's a lot of um, debris, and I see some slime from a little bit uh, angry corals as well, whirling and uh, cranky, cranky corals. There's actually also the clownfish are a little bit cranky because they go below the filter now. They actually go below the sun. All fish, they're wondering what is going on. Um, I'm actually going to leave leave the light on for, for a while it's kind of cool, cold right now uh, it's mostly for me actually uh, if if I get to start seeing the uh, corals uh, that they actually start to suck up water so that they start expanding I think I'm, I'll be sleeping a lot better tonight if you don't I'm not gonna do much about it. I won't do much about it because uh, it's it's late and so I don't want to do damage. Um, so I'm gonna leave the light on for now. And we also have a new friend which we shouldn't forget about. Um, let's see if we can get him into the family. He's actually not as cranky. Very soon now I'm also going to check the temperature um, on the water just to get an indication on how much I lost. Let's see what it's sitting at right now. Ah, it's hitting 22. It's not, it's not a catastrophe. Think it's a catastrophe for these corals but yeah, some corals you maybe know are more sensitive so um, can be worse for those okay so I think it's uh, 30 minutes ago since uh, I turned the light on again um and um it's looking better and better i say this actually what's a little bit interesting is that the one doing the best uh, looks to be actually the uh, the new coming uh, coral the Aiken. it's actually looking uh, be doing really really good I, I did fiddle with the light by the way so I removed the blue just to get a better photo 
um, opportunity. The Rhodactis is coming up and the um, Xanthus is also having a look. I think the Pavia is uh, looking good. Um, Euphilia is starting to opening up. I will actually, by the looks of it, the angle is a little bit off. It looks like the stream is going that way. So I'm gonna tilt it a little bit to get it into the stream. Fish are okay. Crankiest one is the old day can I had and the uh, candy cane. Candy cane is, uh, uh, yeah, actually candy cane. Both are actually opening up a little bit. So it's too early to claim victory, but looking, uh, it is looking promising. Let's keep our thumbs.